The Tom Woods Show, episode 535. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Welcome to another episode of The Tom Woods Show. Mike Church is our guest today. Mike's been a guest a couple of times in the past, and I've been a guest uh, numerous times on his show, which up till recently was carried on Sirius XM Satellite Radio, where Mike was the longest-running talk show host ever, ever in the history of Satellite Radio, but he is no longer with Sirius XM. We're going to talk about what exactly happened there. Mike has really been a hero, in my opinion, for a lot of reasons, and of course one of them was he became a Ron Paulian during the first Ron Paul presidential campaign, when that obviously was not going to do him any favors on the Patriot channel of Sirius XM. That's not going to do him any favors. It's not going to win him a lot of uh, fans, at least in the short run. While the Ron Paul people are still finding out he exists, his current listeners didn't know what was going on. So it was a case of somebody just doing the right thing because he believed it was the right thing to do. It is so rare to encounter somebody like that. So I'm glad to have him on to talk about what he's up to now with his Veritas Radio Network at VeritasRadioNetwork.com. Before I bring on Mike, let me remind you, good homeschooling folks, I realize I'm speaking to you right now in November, and November is not generally a month in which you buy homeschooling curriculum materials. You pretty much make up your mind and you just go with whatever you've got. But if you are, if you've reached a point where you say, I just can't manage this anymore. I'm sick and tired of doing lesson plans all day, and my house is a mess, and I can't keep up with the, with the younger kids, and I'm just emotionally burned out, and I can't wear all these different hats. Then forget the system you have now. Yes, you spent money on it, but there's nothing you can do about that now. Chuck it, forget all about it, and check out the Ron Paul curriculum because it's self-taught, and it'll give you your life back, and it'll save you what? 70, 80% of the time you're spending running around like a lunatic. And also get $140 worth of free bonuses when you get it through my special link, ronpaulhomeschool.com. All right, let's turn now to Mike Church. Mike, welcome to the show. Tom Woods, great to be here with you, old friend. A lot has happened since the last time you were on with me, and I'm talking about your professional life and your broadcasting career. A lot has happened. You are no longer with Sirius XM Satellite Radio. I hinted at that when I was introducing you to the folks just now. So let's start there. I mean, of course, I want to talk about your brand new venture that just launched, and that's really exciting. And if that is a smash success, then it couldn't happen to a more deserving guy. In fact, let me say before we get started that I think up until my Real Descent book, which I self-published, my last two books with Regnery, Rollback and Nullification, I am 99.9% certain I launched both of those books on your show. First thing in the morning on the day of the release. Yeah, uh, you were on both uh, both morning uh, releases. I think they're usually on Tuesdays. And uh, you were on the uh, Mike Church show on the old, uh, old station in the old country, on the old satellite uh, for both of those. And I think you were on it actually twice for nullification. Um, and I remember asking you the question on rollback, Tom, how far back are we going to roll back? And you went, well, if I had my way, how about uh, September 16th, 1787? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Boy, those, those were great. Uh, you were such a, uh, just a tremendous supporter of things I was doing, and I was always grateful for that. And then we would go to events, and I would tell people, listen, if you're not listening to the Mike Church show, you know, I'm going to come to your house <laughs> and do something. You know, Don't make me commit an atrocity here, folks. So what happened over at Sirius? I guess you are more or less at this point at liberty to tell us, and I know we're all dying to know, why are you no longer with Sirius XM? Well, it's a, uh, a story that I guess has its roots in uh, uh, events that began to transpire about three years ago. And uh, as, as you know, as you go through life and as you have kids and uh, your perspective begins to change, uh, my perspective began to change. My, actually, my, my first perspective change was after I met Congressman Paul in 2000, late 2007 and then on through 2008 in that first uh, presidential campaign. It was the first time my perspective changed. And that brought a lot of grief and heartache at Sirius XM, too. I almost lost the radio show then. Wow, I didn't know that. Oh, yes. I was basically told 
going uh, into the 2012 campaign season in 2011, in September, I'll never forget, in 2011, I was basically told that you're on the Patriot Channel, Ron Paul is not going to be the nominee, your uh, your attitude and the way you c conduct your affairs but not being a Republican, and you're on a Republican channel now, um, uh, you need to dial that back, and we need to know that we can count on you covering the campaign the way all the other shows are going to cover the campaign through the uh, through Election Day 2012. So that all the programming all day long would be exactly the same. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> that sounds great. Well, I basically said, uh, well, I'm not sure I understand the question. You know, since why, since when don't I cover the, the, the day's events and then put the Mike Church spin on it and then add some history and then add some, um, some of my opinion or um, some, some things that I've discovered to it. And it just um, and it, it almost resulted in a shouting match. And it was me, David Gorab, the vice president of talk programming, and Andrew Gruce, who was the producer at the time. And uh, it felt like, it may not have felt like it to them or been like it to them, but or for them. But to me, it felt like it was a two-on-one. And uh, I uh, got the sense then that that fork in the road that, uh, that you always hear about that I had taken, <laughs> that I hadn't pleased everyone when I took the fork. Um, but anyways, we made it through the 2012 campaign season, and uh, I thought I was very, uh, I thought I was very true to doing the kind of radio that that uh, that we'd always done, which is always to, to pursue uh, pursue the truth, and then try and pursue the truth through. Uh, at that time, it was more uh, centered and oriented to the uh, vision of the founding fathers. You know, founding father this, founding father that. Well, the Constitution does this, the Constitution that. Um, after that campaign ended, my religious life began to change, and I got introduced to the Latin Mass. And Tom, that is really the beginning of where 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 I am at today. It was the introduction to the Tridentine Rite. Uh, and I, I, I actually can thank you for uh, for some of that because of your book, Sacred Then and Sacred Now, um, which had stirred some interest in me. And then I actually found a Latin mass here. And you may be wondering, what does that have to do with your radio show? Well, because it got me reading and thinking about things differently and certainly reading different things. Now, all of a sudden, I was reading history that didn't all pass through Independence Hall. A lot of it passed through the Vatican <laughs> and, and you start reading world history then with the view on, oh, wait a minute, now there's an awful lot of history out there. That's not all American history. And there's actually some American history that's not very good history. And uh, just that process just continued on. And um, I think over the last year and a half or so, um, uh, it, it began uh, to be a part of what I did every day was reflecting on that reading and on that part of, uh, of my intellectual uh, life, or as we say uh, in Latin, in my pursuit of uh, sapienta. Um, and that really is what I think be began the, uh, probably the evaluation of Mike Church and his usefulness or his, um, his longevity at Sirius XM. So ultimately what happens is, and I'd like to just in inform your listeners and uh, your audience and anyone that's listening to this that, 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 that was a member of my audience, during this time, during that last two and a half years, I had absolutely no conversation with anyone. I never had a program air check session. I never had anyone say, hey, hey, you're going to dial that stuff back a little bit. I never had anyone tell me that I had uh, gone on the wrong direction. I never had any suggestion that I should change anything. I never had any, any, any guidance whatsoever. But in the last six months, um, because of the way this business works and the way you get contracts renewed and things, uh, I knew that uh, um, I, I knew the end was near. And I had actually been preparing uh, to kind of go my own way ultimately for the last uh, since that conversion three years ago. So when I learned, um, let's see, it was uh, October the 16th is when I learned that, uh, well, we're not going to renew your show, but we're going to offer you a weekend show at Sirius XM. I was in a conversation with. David Goreb and with program director Liz Aiello, and I, um, uh, I was offered, uh, was told uh, there was no room for Mike at the inn, 
Uh, I could do a weekend show probably on Sunday mornings at 6 a.m. And um, that day when they told me, because they caught me, caught me a little flat-footed, I said, uh, yeah, yeah uh, that, that's great, I'll do that. Then after they were having a weekend to think about it, because it was a Friday, uh, by the time we reconvened on Tuesday, I had considered it and just had rejected it. And I told them, I said, you know what, I'm not, uh, I, I'm, I'm not doing the weekends. And I told them why. And I said, because it's my belief that you guys want me to do weekends, so you can get me to sign some kind of agreement that will basically um, make it very difficult for me to, to be me somewhere else. And uh, to give uh, to, to to give you guys some kind of an opportunity to invoke some part of a uh, of the contract against me, and uh, um, I I I just don't think I should give that opportunity. I think I'm better off just maybe filling in. If you'll let me do that, or if you know if you have somebody out for a week, let me uh, let me host their show. If you know, you know if you if, if you'll trust me to do that, uh, but I don't want to do the weekend. I don't want to sign any kind of agreement. And that was basically the end of it. Um, let me also say that for anyone that's, that's curious about this, well, didn't you offer? Did you, did you try to stay? Yes. I even offered to work barter. In other words, I volunteered my services in exchange for advertising airtime. And uh, that was rebuffed and rejected. And I was told there's there's no room at the end. And then I made some kind of a quip. I said, you guys got room for the Long Island Dog Lady Show. And you don't have room for Mike Church on your air full time. What about Mike Church's listeners? What about the hundreds upon hundreds of thousands of listeners? What do we tell them? Well, that's not for you to worry about. Uh, and you're going to be fine. You're going to do fine. And that was basically the end of the conversation. It ended like that. Uh, 13 years. No, thank you. Although I did get a, uh, a thank you afterwards from Dave, from, uh, from Dave Gorab, and I'm, um, I'm glad that he did call me and uh, we had a good, a good chat about the good old days. But that's basically how it ended. No room at the end for Mike. No, no room for, uh, for him to be on any, on the uh, SiriusXM air full time. And uh, we split company. They went their way, and uh, now I'm going mine. But uh, I'm very happy about the way I'm going. Well, Mike, I hate playing devil's advocate with you, but let's say – that I'm a serious XM executive. And I said to you, look, Mike, you know, we had your, we had our problems with you over the Ron Paul thing, but at least you were running a political show on a political network and you were doing pretty much what we wanted you to do. But for you to make your show into Catholic hour, that's not what we're paying you to do. So, you, you know, even if you think that's the right thing in an abstract sense, it's not what we're paying you to do. So you're out on your ear. What would you say to that? Um, if they, if, 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 if someone would have said that to me, then I would have taken that professionally as, okay, well, that's a fair evaluation. Uh, now let's, let's talk about that evaluation and let's see if it's, if it's, if it's accurate. And, uh, I would say that, uh, for the, uh, for the most part that it's not accurate. And I think what the difference is, and, uh, this is something that has, um, cultivated or has been cultivated over the last four, maybe five decades. And that's uh, somehow this idea here that there has to be this total separation of, of, of church and state, and this must translate into all facets of our lives. You know the rules, Tom. Uh, it's on your, uh, what do you call it, your three and a half by, your three by five index card? Right. This is a rule. You don't talk about religion and politics, and if you do, well, the state's always superior to your little religious code. Well, as you know, and I don't need to inform you, you of this, but uh, I'll speak to others, that is an inversion of the way that man conducted his public affairs um, uh, throughout the, the entire history uh, since our Lord and uh, throughout all of Christendom. And what I would have said to them if they would have told me that, I, I would have said, well, I think that the, the, the difference is, is that I'm doing the radio show, the same one that I've always done, still doing the same history, still doing the politics, still doing the issues of the day. Um, I'm just doing them now as an avowed Catholic. And I'm, I'm, I'm not in denial of it, um, but I'm also not force, uh, uh, forcing it upon anyone because don't, I don't force anyone to listen. And I didn't I, – I, well, there were people that were turned off by that. I have – email and other correspondence that runs 150 to 1 um, for people that were overjoyed uh, about it and wanted to know why I hadn't done it before. And uh, you know, the, the follow-up question is, uh, why aren't more guys doing this? Why is everyone so mortified to admit 
in uh, the public square and in their uh, in their uh, entertainment lives, if they're entertainers, that they're that, that they're Catholics. And I think that the, the the real thing that ought to that ought to jog people into thinking differently about this is you think of someone like Nancy Pelosi, Joseph Biden. Um, I could go on a list of alleged Catholics that are very public figures and are absolutely atrocious spokesmen for the for for any form of Catholic catechism. In other words, they um, they're basically a, a, a public apostates. They don't live their lives in accordance with the faith that they that they claim to profess, and they wouldn't even have to do it overtly. I kind of like the way John Boehner went out. You know, it's obvious. To, it was obvious to me after Boehner came out of that meeting with Pope Francis, you know, crying and everything, that he was done. That I don't know what Fran, what, what, the, what, what the Holy Father told him, but I suspect it was something to the effect of, uh, "You can't keep doing this if you keep voting on these things and your fingerprints are on these bills that are killing all these babies and uh, funding and financing these wars over hither and yon that are not just and, and all these other things that you're doing." And if you can't, if you feel you're you're, you're in a position to where your politics are overcoming and are taking precedence over your over your your faith and your and your responsibilities uh, that you take that you know that you have as a Catholic, you've got to pick. And I I I think that you want to pick your faith over your politics. So I think Boehner chose correctly. I mean, uh, uh, for all the grief that the man has taken for it, I think that, um, you know, he said in his farewell uh, address, if you go to his website and look at it, that it was the Holy Ghost that got to him. Um, and I think that the, the Speaker Boehner actually, uh, that's why he bowed out. So I would just, uh, that's that's how I would have responded. What do you, why do you want me to deny what is ultimately more important to all of us and elevate what is less important to all of us? Well, Mike, you said that for several years you knew that something like this was bound to happen, so that means you must have been planning for it in some way, and now you've just launched uh, an enterprise of your own. Is this more or less what had been germinating in your mind for the past few years? It is a, um, it is a pretty good representation of what, had been, what I had been thinking about. Uh, it's not totally realized yet. Um, you know, there's, uh, uh, I think it was, it was either Spielberg or Lucas. I, I can't keep up with either one of those two, <laughs> and I don't keep up with them, with them. But one of them said once upon a time, you know, a, a movie, it was Lucas. Now, I, I remember, uh, it was George Lucas said, a movie is never finished if you keep, as a director or as a uh, editor or whatever, if you keep watching it. So <laughs> I don't know that I would ever get to where I would say, yes, that's it. That's the perfect thing, thing that I want to do. But this is pretty close. And I had been thinking about it for uh, for a couple of years. And I've been wondering some of the things that uh, I had wondered at the time when I joined Satellite Radio. And many people thought I was nuts back in 2003. Nobody's going to buy a radio. Nobody's going to pay for a service that they get for free already. Uh, besides, Pandora is coming around and Internet Radio is coming. You guys are going to get crushed. It's never going to work. Blah, 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 blah. You're never going to get any calls. You're, you know, you're doing talk radio on a format that's made for music. All, all the objections. Uh, I, I'm hearing all those objections, many of those objections with what we're doing now with the Veritas Radio Network. Um, and what we're going to do, of course, Veritas Latin for truth, what we're going to do is to, uh, I'm going to put radio shows on this network that are the kind of radio shows that I think ought to be on network radio. And uh, they won't be. It won't be all Catholic radio all the time. For example, our our mutual friend Professor Kevin Goodsman will be doing a Constitution Hour show weekly, uh, and it might actually be two hours. But uh, looking forward to that. We have a, a former uh, NSA agent, a, a former uh, Army Intel guy who's going to be doing a fantastic show that I think. Uh, your friends at LouRockwell.com uh, are, are going to love this show. It's called Reverse Deception, and it's about what the surveillance state is doing and what the surveillance corporate state is doing and how to protect yourself from it. Um, those are the kind of uh, th those are just two of the shows that we're going to have on our uh, on our Veritas Radio Network. Um, I think we're just going to do radio, and the slogan is "Radio the way it should be." That we're going to do uh, radio with a focus on truth. And when, when I say truth, I, I mean revealed truth uh, as we can know it and as we can repeat it. Um, but with an emphasis on it also uh, being entertaining, 
but with it, but with it being um I don't want to use the word wholesome because then people start thinking that, you know, it's going to be the, the 700 club and they start running for, <laughs> running for the hills, <laughs> but not offensive in a, uh, in a vulgar manner. Cause I think you can do all the things that you need to make compelling radio without being vulgar. Um, it's going to be 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, we'll lead where others hopefully will follow and we will not have any, Live bodies working on Sundays. Sundays will be, uh, it's my good friend Steve Cunningham is going to host a, a eight hour repeating wheel, just calling his Sunday sermons with Steve Cunningham. He's the, uh, Tom, you'd love him. He's the, he, he, I call him the world's greatest living non ordained apologist. <laughs> uh, and uh, we'll actually on Sunday, it will, it will be all Catholic radio all day long, but no one's working. We're not going to have anyone working. And that's the way I think that uh, broadcasting ought to be anyways. We ought to, uh, uh, most things, remember blue laws? How quickly we forgot there were all these blue laws. Gee, I wonder why those were in effect. Uh, in any event, radio the way uh, it should be. Uh, it's going to be exciting. Mike Churchill will be the exact same as it was. Uh, we'll have great guests like you, like Professor Goodsman, like Professor uh, McClanahan, uh, like Professor Livingston. Um, uh, we'll have some uh, uh, congressmen stopping by from time to time. I've already spoken with Congressman Gomert. And uh, Congress, uh, Louis Gomer has uh, volunteered to come by. We have some great writers, Jordan Bloom, uh, David Harsani of The Federalist, uh, Michael Brendan Doherty. Um, who else do we have? Uh, Steve Skojek from One Peter Five is an up and comer. Uh, Steve will have, have some role in what we're going to do. Uh, we're just going to have a very diverse, uh, very cool and very original lineup. Well, I'm very pleased to hear the role that Kevin Gutzman will have because I've always felt that the world needs more Kevin Gutzman and it doesn't get enough. I can't say enough about Professor Gutzman's, uh, Kevin's ability to be able to take any issue that has anything to do with federal law and provided he's had enough time in advance to think about it, to mold it and sculpt it and shape it in a manner that is, number one, very uh, um it's very highbrow, but at the same time, it's understandable. And uh, to put it in, uh, in common sense terms and to make you feel, uh, those of us that study these things, like, man, how stupid am I? <laughs> I didn't know any of this stuff. You know, it, it, it almost reminds me of a talk that I watched you give one time, Tom. And uh, you were talking about some, this book that Murray, uh, uh, I think it was Diaries of Murray Rothbard. You remember that? Oh, well, let's see. Well, c continue, and I'll see if I remember. Your memory may be better than mine. Yeah, some some lost files of Murray's that were found and you know, packaged into a book. And uh, he, he, Murray had written in his diary something about how how he was so puzzled that, you know, he was talking about this barter agreement of 1811, and everyone knew about the barter agreement of uh, Salem, Massachusetts of 1811. I mean, my goodness, how could someone not know about that? Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. All his, uh, all his uh, privately circulated memos about various books, right. and 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 he knew all the he knew all the details better than the authors, and so he could he could pick out all the errors in the book and 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 treat and treat as you say these obscure laws or obscure <laughs> treaties as if these are things everybody really probably should know the details of. So how could you make such an elementary mistake? <laughs> well, Kevin says things like that. Well, you know, everyone was privy to the conversation between Governor Barber in 1829 and James Madison. And anyone that's read that, you know, Mark Levin is obviously an idiot because, oh, so what? James Madison wrote a letter, Mark. Big deal. <laughs> just things like that. Uh, he's always a great uh, – uh, I just find him uh, – people say, I love, it. I love it when you have Dr. Gutzman on your show because I learned so much. And I always say to them – well, I'm glad you learned so much because I learned so much too. That's why. He could yeah, that's part of the reason I have the guests on that I have is that I can, I, because I, I suppose if you know, Kevin and I are old friends, I could call him up and he could answer a question for me. But a lot of these people I don't know that well. I couldn't really call them up and expect them to give me a lesson for 35 minutes. So I just have them as a guest on the show and I get the information that I need. That's the way it works for me. Now, let me ask, you know, you know, the really tricky question in all this, which is that even though the Internet does make it possible for people like you who are dissident voices to get out there and have your own platform, you know, the money has to be there. Yeah. And how is that going to look and how are you going to try to make that work? 
So the, uh, the model that we are going to develop, which I think is something that is, uh, is unique and um, because of the unique position or former position that I occupy, um, I am able to attempt this in a manner in which no one has attempted it before. And, and let me explain that. And please help me, uh, help me out if I start sounding full of pride and vanity because I'm not trying to, but I need to, uh, to try and uh, explain what's to answer your question uh, properly. And that's this. Other people have had the money and have invested the money and have started kind of like internet radio networks that uh, had some talk radio on or, or some talk on them and uh, have tried to build an audience. Uh, we're doing this and uh, the process is different. I don't have to build an audience. I have one. It's, um, it's, it's by some estimates up to what was up to a million a week. A serious XM. I don't have to build a reputation. I already have one. It developed uh, being the longest running radio talk show ever in the history of satellite radio, a record that will still stand. And it'll take Andrew Wilkow six more years of doing what he's doing every day to break that record. And I, I believe he would be the one coming close. I don't have to go out and establish relationships with clients, with advertisers. I already have them. And I've been servicing clients for 10 years. Uh, so all the things that have been uh, people have tried to develop with internet-based radio and internet-based radio shows, we already have on the Veritas Radio Network because we have the Mike Church Show. So have a great so we have a a, a, a head start and uh, uh, hit the ground running with a sh show that people are going to uh, as, as long as it continues in the, in the manner in which it was being delivered. I think we'll be fine there. Um, our model is twofold. One of the things that I could never overcome on Sirius XM uh, was that if you didn't have a satellite radio subscription, there was very little chance, unless you came to an event that I was at, that you would ever hear me speak or that you'd ever hear any more than a five sec a five minute clip, which is all we were allowed to promote per day, unless I did something that uh, didn't have anything to do with the satellite radio show. And of course, you know, you just run out of time. You can't do three and four shows a day. So... There were uh, millions upon millions of people that I think would have enjoyed and will enjoy the show that would not have uh, been uh, enjoyed it because they didn't have a satellite radio subscription. But now, if they have one of those smartphones in their hands, uh, every one of those smartphones is a radio station. It's a radio now uh, through the miracle or through the, uh, the, the magic of the technology that we have. You know, all you need is a, uh, is a browser on it and uh, a, a decently designed website. And we've been working for a couple of years thinking that this day would ultimately come. Uh, we already have all this stuff built. We have a, a, a built-in player that's going to relay the show live. The show will go out free. Won't cost anything live. If you want to listen to Mike Church Show weekday mornings at 8 a.m. at MikeChurch.com or at VeritasRadioNetwork.com, the stream will be free. No, uh, no that's 8 a.m. Central? 8 a.m. Central. Uh, okay. Now we'll have advertisers. Uh, as I said, we bring some of our clients over from uh, from from some of the other um, from some of the the people that we did business with in the past, and we ha we have new uh, we have new clients, new advertisers. So we'll have advertising dollars. Um, we have a subscription based service, which is if you want to download the show, if you don't want to wait for the for a rebroadcast of it, and you go immediately as soon as the show is closed, and you can download it. We'll cut the commercials out. And it'll be become a uh, a podcast product. Um, we also have the hundreds upon hundreds of other uh, features that we've been building over the years about American history and founding fathers and all that. That's also part of the service. So it's twofold service. It is a, uh, a revenue generating service for the live radio stream. Now note that it's Veritas Radio Network, which implies other channels. Hopefully, in the future. I can't tell you what they uh, what they're going to be. I, actually, I know what two of them are going to be. Hopefully, but that's the that's the goal is to build an actual network and have more than one channel. Uh, the channel I'll be on is called Crusade, and then the other part of the model is the subscription based service. Uh, we figured how many subscribers we needed to bring over from Sirius XM that were listeners to make the first year work economically, and we are about forty percent of the way there in nine days. So. The future is bright for, for that. And as I said, we're uh, hoping to bring something to Internet-based radio that was not there before, and that is a talent that people uh, hopefully still want to hear. 
And uh, it's not that difficult to, uh, to hear it on a smartphone, uh, on a tablet, or on a computer desktop. Well, Mike, I wish you the best of luck with it. I mean, it's on the one hand, as I've sometimes said on here, it's very exhilarating to, you know, to go out on your own and strike out on your own path as, you know, frankly, I did about five years ago. But at the same time, you know, there is something that's frankly a little bit terrifying about looking ahead to the future and not really knowing exactly where things are going to go. Now, you do have these very positive early indications, but it's a tricky thing you're doing, but yet it has so much tremendous potential. And as I say, I hope it's a smash success for you because you deserve uh, all the successes in the world, not only for the quality of the stuff that you put out, but frankly also for the kindness that you've shown to people like me and to just so many good folks who in their own way have been trying to pursue the truth, and you featured them and built them up on your show, and if there's any justice in the world, they will come out of the woodwork and support you in your new venture. So again, uh, glad to talk to you as always, and uh, I'll check in with you and see how it's all going very soon. Well, Tom, thank you very much, and uh, uh, as always, you'll, you're, you're now that I'm on at a respectable hour and you're awake. <laughs> so, <laughs> I know. Oh, that that morning show you had was murder. <laughs> Five to eight Five. Central Time. Are you kidding me? Uh, hopefully, we'll have uh, Tom Woods back on the uh, uh, on the Mike Church show in the very near future. Uh, uh, just, just one more thing before we go. Yeah. What we're doing here now. Th this is uh, p people. I, I've been asked. So you're doing a podcast? Well, you can get it as a podcast, but no. I want people, just like we did with Satellite Radio, I want people to think that when you want to listen to what Mike thinks, he's on, all i got to do is pull my phone out or sit down on my computer desktop, and if I have connection, he's there. The app works. We've been testing it for weeks. It's the, the sound quality. First of all, the sound quality is amazing over what we were able to do on Satellite Radio because of the of bandwidth limitations. That's number one. You're going to get an immediate boost in quality. Number two, who says that a radio has to look like one of those old-fashioned things that your grandma had in the living room that, uh, you know, that she used to sit around and – or your great-grandma – used to sit around and listen to Franklin Delano Obama, Roosevelt's fireside chats. You know, things change. The shape of cars change. The way we drive cars change. The way, the way cars are built has changed. The way planes are built has changed. No one ever said, well, you've got to stick with the planes that only have propellers on them. <laughs> That'd be like, well, it has to come out of a the, of a car radio or a radio. No, the phone is the radio now. It functions just like a radio. There's no difference, and almost every American has one. So, Tom Woods, I invite you and your listeners to come join the Veritas Radio Revolution, uh, kind of like Ron Paul's revolution. Uh, I hope we're a little more successful than Congressman Paul was, just a little bit. Well, VeritasRadioNetwork.com is the site. You know, I did want to ask you, maybe before we go, are you rooting for anybody in the election, or have you gotten to a point where because of your other commitments you feel like this is a sideshow and not that important? Do you have any allegiances? Um, politically speaking, uh, I, I am still a, uh, a supporter, uh, Senator Rand Paul. Um, I don't agree with Rand on everything, but I think he is by far – the most intelligent of that entire crop. Um, he certainly has the pedigree, and he says a lot of things that I nod my head and I go, yep, that's that, that's exactly. I hear a lot of raw and Congressman Paul in him. Uh, so I'm with Rand. Uh, I don't think that Rand is going to, to make it, though, um, unfortunately. But I, I don't, I don't want to rule it out. These, these things can happen. I think what's going to happen here is that this is going to come as a shock to people. Uh, Donald Trump is not going to go away, and neither has Ben Carson. Uh, I think that they're both uh, admirable candidates uh, as far as being celebrities. And I think it's also at the same time a tragedy and a travesty that uh, celebrity status is what is now equal to statecraft because the two are not the same. Um, I think what is going to, to happen, though, is that at this time in May of 2016, Tom, you and I and your audience and my audience are going to be talking about the last couple of uh, Super Tuesday states and how important they're going to be to the finish line between Jebediah Bush and Marco Rubio. That's it's got, that's what it's going to come down to. It'll either be Rubio or Bush. I'm still thinking it's going to be Bush 
because he's part of the cabal. If you're watching the television show, The Blacklist, the Bush family is the cabal. Uh, so I still think it's going to be Bush, but I think Rubio's got an outside chance, but I don't think it's going to be either Carson or Trump. And as I said, they're both admirable guys, and both, there's a lot to like in both of them. There's a lot to like in Senator Paul, too. But I think the politics and the money say, uh, and history say, that it's Jeb or Rubio versus Hillary. Hillary is not going to be our president, though. I do not believe that Hillary, and I'm pretty good at calling these things, she is not going to be elected. Wow. Okay. I still get people saying that in spite of all her troubles now, you know, she has turned things around because of that debate and things are looking up and Biden didn't jump in. And so she may well have it wrapped up, but we'll wait and see. I can't make predictions. I'm terrible. Unlike you, I'm terrible at calling these things. I'm the worst. But although, although, the next best thing than being a good a good predictor is being the worst predictor in the world because then you just do the opposite of whatever I predict. <laughs> you automatically know that <laughs> you should believe the opposite. All right, well, thanks again, Mike. Best of luck. VeritasRadioNetwork.com is where people should check you out. We're going to link to that at uh, TomWoods.com slash 535, which is our show notes page for today. Thanks again, Mike. Good luck. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it very much. All right, that's our episode today. I owe Mike Church so much, and so I was delighted to have an opportunity to pay him back for all the kindnesses he's shown me over the years by giving him an opportunity to share with you what he's up to today. VeritasRadioNetwork.com is the website. Thanks for listening, everybody. See you tomorrow. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time.